Hi, this is Lee from Fondant and Apron Strings um, in a little cake cafe in County Durham in a little village called Stanup. Um, I'm now, actually, now I'm sitting here in my own kitchen with a nice cup of green tea voicing over this because this video was made um, when the cafe was open, so I'm in the back, so it's really difficult to talk when that's happening, which is why I make the videos and then I voice over them um, when, when we're open. Okay, so here I am going to be showing you how to decorate the um, these wonderful feathers here. I've used a mould, um, obviously, but you don't necessarily have to use a mould. Before I could afford to use moulds, because they can be quite expensive, I used to just um, cut the shape of the, the feathers out myself and then put little dents in them with tools. So just please feel free to do that. You don't have to have anything spectacular. Um, what I'm also using are lots of different colours of um, colouring dust, uh, so and different uh, size brushes, but it'll all become clear. So I'm just going to talk you through it. Um, I've just got back from holiday, so my brain's a bit, little bit addled. So um, there's a lot of M's in this. So just ignore me because I'm still wishing I was in the sunshine. So what I've done now is, as you can see, used a brown. Now all of these, this is this is going to look really strange. This is one of those things that looks worse before it actually gets better. And they turn out really, really spectacular and um, add a little wow factor to anything you make that needs feathers, whether it's a children's cake or adult's cake. This is actually going to go on an adult's cake and it's already been delivered. I don't release these videos until the cakes have been delivered. Otherwise, that would be a really bad surprise for the person. And I think this is a Gatsby cake. So what I've done is got some brown and you can see I've got lots of paper around here because one, I'm messy and you'll see by my fingers, I've got lots of lots of red paint on my fingers because I have uh, previously to this been painting on the cake. Um, but also because, as you can see, I'm tapping little bits of dust onto the paper because it's a bit like when you put um, strong paint as you can see I've just done there you can see we put little strong paint it might be a little bit too intense the color so if you tap it onto paper first and then dip your brush in and sometimes knock it off it becomes a little bit more subtle now the Gatsby cake is a basic black cake but it has lots and lots of wonderful gold and it's got headbands on it and feathers and it's it's quite pretty and I love doing it. Um, one of my favourite things is when people just say to me, here's a theme, go with it. So I really had fun with it. And I think the lady also had a dessert bar. <laughs> Check those out, they're fabulous. Um, to go with it, it was a, it was a 50th birthday, so she was having a, lots of her friends to stay somewhere wonderful. So these were going to go on there. They're made out of gum paste and I have made them two days before to make them um, nice and set nice and hard. Gum paste or you call it flower paste, whichever you prefer to call it. I just call it gum paste. And depending on the um, colour scheme of your cake, you can use these on um, any anything. You can make many colours. I've used them lots and I'm hoping that I can add some pictures at the end just to show you um, the different ways you can use these um so i this is obviously a black cake but it's got lots of lots of gold edgings on it and and pearls and things like that so i really wanted to add lots of gold to it now you, i put the brown on first i always start with the darker color down the middle um and that's just because i trying to get it obviously it's not a real feather i don't do realism um but it's you've got to sort of try and make it look sort of like a feather so the dark down the middle is something i always start with and then i think about the main colour which in this case is gold for the cake and add little bits of what I think um, highlight that cold, that colour. So I'll use in the um, greens and, and yellows but here's a colour that I absolutely adore. Um, this is a light teal colour. Again I'm just tapping it out there just to because it lot, little goes a long long way and this is very intense so you can see I'm putting it on, I tested it out there just to make sure it wasn't too intense and it wasn't. So um, again, it's going to look worse before it looks better. It almost looks like you're just not, I'm just not paying attention to where I'm putting things, but actually I am. I want a lot of colour um, coming out so that all of the texture, um, you can see all the texture there and you know, that'll become clear when it's all done. Um, but I'm equally not, not covering the whole thing in this teal. It's just a highlight. Um, it can be a little bit, feathers can be a little bit, 
one dimensional if you don't sort of add an extra color. So really I've only added the brown down the center, a little bit of the green, uh, the yellow and the teal. And you can see that in the corner on the piece of paper there. That flash was me actually remembering to turn the lights on. My husband, Mr. G, added some wonderful lights in the back um, because it is a little bit dull sometimes where a back wall is um, against the castle, which is lovely. Um, but it's really, really cold in winter, really, really hot in summer. Um, and the light isn't very good. And we've just had some new lights put in. And that was me with my memory just going, oh, maybe I should turn the lights on. Now, I'm I'm just doing a little bit on the, the back here. Um, one, because I don't need to go overboard with it because they're going to be stuck against the cake. Um, so uh, unless I had hours and hours and hours to, to do this, or if, if, for instance, if there were C in the back of the... Um, feathers I would be spending a lot more time but actually all I want to do is get rid of the white so it it just doesn't look so um, mind-bogglingly different to the front of the feather uh, and the next bit is my favorite actually because we're going to be adding a little bit of paint to it let me just remind you that everything that we make in this cake cafe is made for real cakes uh, and therefore real customers so really everything we have to do it has to happen first time so we you know we do practice on things but um they have to go onto a real cake and go out to customers so they have to look pretty good i've just i'm just using a gold edible paint here now you can use if you wanted to have a different contrast you could but as you as you've heard me mention a few times gold and black are the themes of this gatsby cake so what i'm doing is just adding a little bit extra oomph and putting some gold dots all over it with just a, a very thin brush here. This is when I think um, the whole feather comes to life because you've added the, uh, the base and then we start to add little extra bits that make it more dynamic. Again, it's not real. I don't do realism of things as you check out my cakes and the website is... Um, www.fondantandapronstrings.com you'll see all of our reviews and you'll see lots and lots of things on their blogs and it's getting an update so by the wonderful Dawn Emery who's doing a lot of stuff for me so that's pretty cool but um, you'll see I don't do realism but I'd like to sort of make it as dynamic as possible you can see already those uh, dots make a little bit of difference and I'm just going to keep adding to them and you can see I, I sort of go from one feather to the to the other. I tend to, I'm trying to be um, as good with time management as possible. So instead of putting one colour in way and starting another one and doing one feather, I tend to go from, keep one colour out and do them all at the same time. So uh, hence the, go on to the third one. Gosh, my fingers are so dirty. It looks like I've been digging in a coal mine. And really all that is, uh, um, I've, this is like, I go from one cake to, to the next and I do wash my hands in between but sometimes when I use food colouring I should wear gloves when I'm mixing the fondant but I tend not to so I've always got thing colour under my nails and things like that um, oh there you go add a little bit more and you'll know when it when it looks right there you go I'm just where I put the brown down that spine um, I'm just going over that in gold just to add a little bit more um, and I can remember if you think back to when I first put the brown on the beginning of this tutorial the brown looked really harsh but now you can't really see the brown it's all sort of it's almost like a background colour don't need that much of a steady hand for this although on some things I paint and I do tend to paint a lot with edible paint it is one of my favourite things um, and it's probably one of the things we were known for really crazy crazy cakes classic eclectic and a little bit quirky so that's basically it please follow us and subscribe um i'm going to keep putting these out hopefully once every couple of weeks and i would love our subscription to go up please share with other people so have a great time um and there you go and i'm going to show you it on a on a cake in just a moment hopefully okay thanks for watching